they get that from. Uh, but uh, these are maybe from complaints that people have phoned in uh, since this topic uh, started uh, cropping up um, earlier this year. And um, I'm thinking what they're uh, looking at is the residential homestays uh, are possibly a good portion of those. But really, when you look at the, uh, the numbers that we found out, there's a higher percentage of rooming houses that are 30 days or greater in the rental. Uh, so that um, a lot of these homestays, which are 29 days or less, so they're daily or weekly rentals, uh, those will likely, uh, as the various councillors said, uh, they won't uh, get the seal of approval by the Planning Commission. And uh, just to satisfy Mr. Zur and some of the other people who are having to deal with these, that uh, they're likely going to convert over to uh, the 30 day or greater rooming houses. So but we're going to have a lot more rooming houses. But, but how do you think life's going to change for you yeah. given today? How's it going to change for me? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm hoping that uh, with this parking enforcement, which was what got me involved in this in the first place, because uh, with the added snow we've had this winter, uh, I was out. Uh, noticing that people were having to turn around, they couldn't drive down our street, and uh, you know, there's uh, a need to uh, address that, and, and they seem to have done that to some degree. But uh, you know, I'm concerned about our neighborhood too. I've lived in the neighborhood for 33 years, and uh, I think that you know, a lot of these houses are getting uh, very, um, you know, poorly maintained. Uh, I know of other people in Whitmore Park. Uh, I won't specify the direct area, but uh, they have a lot more rooming houses than I do uh, because they're close to Syaston University. And they had the uh, number of these houses had to be closed down by the city because of code violations. And that was only brought to their attention once the roofs, the interior roofs, caved in from the extra frost that was in the ceiling, the mice dams and so on. Uh, there was mold in all the bathrooms. Uh, my uh, friend and neighbor uh, had phoned the city three years ago and identified these problems. He had somebody come out from uh, the planning area and uh, said, you know, these are the problems that exist. And um, and nothing was done. Uh, the city enforcement people, even though they had a, a team of people or a group of people that could go in and, and, uh, and help these tenants, they didn't do that. So well, what about the counter argument that this, you know, there's low vacancies and uh, unaffordable housing for many people, that this is a compromise? What would you say to that? Uh, well, obviously, they have to uh, sort of tread softly in this area because there, there's a low vacancy rate, and I can see where they're coming from that. They don't want to have people out in the street. Um, that kind of gives them the bad guy uh, reputation. And, uh, but I think they have to recognize that there has to be some standards enforced. And that's where this licensing bylaw, which I know in London, Ontario, costs $50 to buy a rooming house or a, a residential renting um, license. The inspectors go in there, they see if it's satisfactory to live in, and if it is, it meets the criteria they have, uh, then people can rent rooms, up to four rooms in their house. Uh, why can't the city adopt something like that? Uh, just choose some of the best practices that are out there. Just, and go with just to be clear with the concern you have, because the city said, at least the city says that um, they believe this will force a lot of people to get development permits, so they just won't do it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, do you believe that, uh, it seems like you believe that that won't happen and things will just be status quo, is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If these people are renting out uh, daily or weekly rooms, I suppose they'll have to maybe go underground a bit more and maybe not advertise in GG or use your John and find other ways of uh, renting out the properties. Uh, the internet is a fairly convenient way to advertise that. Uh, and the city has promised that you know they will monitor that. Um, but I'm of the opinion that uh, the fact that they're going to charge a uh, higher fee, and I've heard $2,500 is part of that permit fee, that, that might steer a number of people away from doing that and going and renting their house on a monthly or a period of time. So I can see a movement in that direction. I guess just because it seems that, I mean, the city says they're enforcing it, and I guess it sounds like you're saying that they're just not. Like, on paper they're enforcing it, but in practice they're not. In practice they're not. Uh, well, you know, I, I don't have the, uh, the numbers there. Uh, that was one of the things I was hoping that uh, some of these managers would be able to provide tonight. What is their track record? What, uh, you know, uh, they have all these different complaints. Well, how, um, how are they doing, uh, you know, as far as uh, effectiveness? Are they curing these problems? Uh, how are they uh, educating people? That was one of the things they alluded to, that uh, people, a lot of people don't know what their rights are uh, living in these places. So, uh, the city's responsibility uh, is you know, a requirement to, to look after people's uh, uh, health and 
I think that you know they need to uh, to to bring that uh, out in the open a little bit more, and uh, hopefully they can create better awareness. And, and, and it's well formed. Yeah. If they do that, then they can go into that property. But right now, that's a big wall that they have to deal with. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, all of them. All right. Awesome. You guys like I, a, Mike, by the way, you guys like a point. I work for a public policy think tank. When I wasn't able to present today, so if you're interested. Um, I might be, uh, be okay. I was maybe creating your comments. Sure. Yeah. Um, are we in a quiet enough spot? Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, okay. I, I don't need to. I don't need to. All right, John, uh, I guess just your reaction to, to today's decision. Well, uh, I'm fairly pleased. Uh, I wanted the Vermin House uh, definition to be removed because it wasn't really useful. Um, it had been used to enforce uh, against people that aren't uh, causing uh, harm, and the people that most uh, residents in Hillsdale are concerned about actually aren't affected by what the Vermin House bylaw was. Uh, now what's in effect uh, may change that, and, and they may get some action. Um, one of the delegations that was opposed to the report actually stated that their uh, concern was uh, parking. And uh, parking enforcement's been stepped up, and he admitted that it's been much better since they stepped up uh, parking enforcement. So perhaps that will address the concerns uh, more than anything, uh, is the additional parking enforcement. Great. Um, you know what? I think that's, you know what? You pretty much covered it. just need something short and quick. Perfect. You're welcome. Uh, there are teams that are going out to investigate and, and check these these places and see what kind of, of uh, ability they're having to access them to, to verify them. What are your thoughts about the city's counter argument that low vacancy rates on affordable housing is sort of forcing them to afford it? They have to do this. This is a compromise. Well, I, I you know I don't have a lot of the background on it. I can offer my my suggestion is maybe. Why doesn't the city look at uh, building their own home developments? They own them, they operate them, they set the rates, they get the income for it. Uh, part of the stuff they were talking about here is how they, um, where they're going to get the revenue from. And uh, there might be a potential source to stand up their own, uh, maybe see them stand up their own uh, housing units and, and, and set the rates and controls on those. What do you expect to see at your place tomorrow? What's going to change? Uh, I expect to see the, first and foremost, I expect to see the, the hotel operation go away and all of the, uh, the classified type ads to, to disappear um, and uh, the, any of those type of, of those uh, operations happening in the city will full seats. And that, uh, you know, I guess some long-term occupants um, will be in there, whether it be a long-term rental or a new transfer of ownership. So, uh, as an extension to that, I'm hoping that the, uh, the parking during the winter time um, becomes more manageable. And, uh, Are you worried that they'll just turn it around and make it a rooming house? Well, uh, I have some concerns for that. I, uh, li listening to some of the, the, the arguments on, on what the discretionary use is uh, and how the, the, the council is, is trying to stand by that and that it, it means some hard decisions for them. Uh, that gives me some confidence. Uh, the part that concerned me most is that they had said that they were going to pull the, the, the immediate neighborhood uh, for a very small radius, but essentially said that it, the council made the ultimate decision, so it kind of is uh, leading me to believe that, that pulling the neighborhood really isn't going to carry any weight if, if there's a strong opposition to uh, an application to, to develop that type of movement in the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You guys like a comment from me? Yeah, I work in that for a public policy thing. I can give you a bit of a comment from the other side of the room. Okay, what's your name? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a Well, okay. from here. Yeah. Oh, I think I might have emailed you something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm disappointed you didn't get a chance to speak. I wasn't able to submit on time.
So here's your uh, uh, name uh, and job title. Uh, Peter McCaffrey, uh, MCC Big Head R E Y, Policy Analyst for the Frontier Centre for Public Policy. And, and you're you're observing tonight, or what was your capacity here? Yeah, just here. Uh, sort of, I work on public policy research and all these kinds of issues in our city, and so I was interested in along and see what's happening. And what did you glean from all this? Well, I, I think primarily this is a, a property issue. <coughs> it's a question of whether you believe that the community can tell individual uh, house owners who lives in their house. And I don't think that really that's a good idea and that's something the council should be looking into. And so I'm pleased that they've uh, changed the bylaw here, they've removed the, the definition of rooming houses, and that allows people to have someone rent out to be a room in their house without a threat of going to jail, which I, I think is ludicrous to be suggesting that that should be a realistic possibility. Um, with regards to things like public safety. Um, I think that actually removing the illegality of having someone sharing your house is actually far more likely to increase uh, the likelihood of the public reporting issues with the housing office. If, if you're a renter in a house and you have a concern about the condition of the quality of the house that you're renting, you're very unlikely to be able to go to the council and say, you know, please come and fix this house, because the result of that report would be that you get kicked out of your house when you when, when they discover that what you're doing is actually illegal. So allowing people to legally live in shared accommodation and sharing the cost in the you know, very high cost to city that we have at the moment actually allows allows them to report safety concerns to the council now, which they can't do at the moment because they have this fear of being thrown out of the house. So I think it's a big improvement for public safety. So you like this option one of the city? A absolutely. Um, I, I have actually concerns about the controls they're putting, trying to put on uh, the, the short-term uh, accommodation that they're setting up, uh, because we'll see the same issues. Um, what, do you say to, what do you say to neighbours here though that say this is run, somewhat run amok? Well, I understand that they have concerns around safety and all those sorts of things, but really, realistically, we have bylaws that cover all those different issues already. And if the council isn't involved in trying to decide whether people who live in houses are related to each other, they'll have a lot more time and resources to dedicate to enforcing those core government roles around safety and health and, and the adequacy of the accommodation. So I, I guess the question is whether they're going to do that now. That's uh, the question some of the, the sure, residents yeah, have. But, but, I mean, you, you I mean, can't enforce them. only as, I mean, the laws are only as good as the enforcement. Absolutely, but the current situation wasn't being enforced. And so I think it's silly to oppose what they're looking to improve just because you're concerned that it might be enforced. I mean, if, if we didn't change any laws because you thought they wouldn't be enforced, that there was a waste of time. What's the point of changing any laws at all? You think, so you think by July 2014 comes along that this will bylaw will have been deemed a good decision? Well, I think it's a, it's a more realistic law that can actually be enforced. You, you can't enforce a law where no one who is affected by the law is willing to report any issues because they'll get thrown out of their house. If they were able to report problems, it's far easier for councils to go and address those issues. Okay. All right. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. I was going to offer to do an interview, too, but he said everything I needed to say. So. As long as you said it, good. Yeah. Thanks. Good.